I'm going to make it fast so that you don't have to stay too long. But so this week's challenge. So there are two things this week. You can choose, especially if you are, if you want to go in the week, uh, in the Web3 stream. And then if you haven't finished, you can actually go and finish this week and deliver basically the complete work. Um, so that means you, you must specify what you will work on in, a, in the extension of both week six, uh, the Algorand and this week's challenge or the past week's challenge on Ethereum. And you have to pre-specify today if you want to. Yeah, Salam. Salam, do you want to speak? Okay, maybe it's raised by mistake. Sorry, sorry, uh, it's by mistake. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so the the two things from here on, I think, as you may understand, just we are really changing gear, and it's really all about code code tests, SQL tests. Those are the very like you know you have to start practicing. Um, and and the, so this week's main project is the data engineering and a lot more that you have to work on some basically just uh, data models and um, setting up a data warehouse. But if you are in the web three, you can continue the previous week's ones, but you must, by the end of today, you will have to um, submit your interest, basically a plan what you would work on, like, uh, what the part is the miss, the, the parts that you missed and you want to complete this week. Okay. So you can continue on that one, but all the rest, all the others, just you work on, on the data engineering that, that we have, um, uh, which is for the week one. So week 11, uh, project. So as I said, data engineering, it's data warehouse tech stack with, I think MySQL or Postgres actually I'm requiring Postgres now before it's, but you can choose if you want to, MySQL or Postgres, DBT Airflow. I think the Spark, you can add it or remove it. It doesn't matter. I think um, it should have just been like that for now. Okay. And the most important part, because this, is, this has less descriptions compared to before, but the most important part is the business uh, need. And you must assume that now you are working or established a startup that is basically deploying sensors to businesses, collect data from all activities in a business, including people's interaction, traffic flows, smart appliances installed in a company, and more. Okay, your startup helps organizations uh, obtain critical intelligence based on public and private data they collect and organize. Okay. Now, as the startup uh, client, one of the clients is a city traffic department. And the uh, city department of, uh, wants to collect traffic data using swarm UAVs, drones, from a number of locations in the city and use the data collected for improving traffic flow in the city and for a number of other undisclosed projects. So this is critical. Just that means it, it helps you to understand that you're not just solving, you're not setting up a data warehouse for just one, you know, um, one application, uh, in this case, traffic flow. but it's specified that it must work and it must be easy for a traffic flow, but there are also undisclosed projects that uh, city um, traffic department will use. So your startup in this case, as a, you know, um, contracting is responsible for creating a scalable data warehouse that will host the vehicle trajectory data extracted by analyzing footage taken by the drones, as well as also there will be in the future, they are going to install static roadside cameras. And from there also, you will basically be able to get some data. Okay. So there are some future needs that are not implemented. And then the current implemented one, which is basically, um, they, they basically have drones. They go every day at specific time and, um, positions and they record, they get the footage and the footage is then transformed it by AI, uh, some software, AI software that basically ad identifies cars and their trajectories. Okay. So the data warehouse you should be working on, you should be working or you should be building to take into account future needs, organized data sets that a number of downstream projects, that means analy analysts, 
um, analytics engineers, data scientists, and machine learning engineers would be using. And so they basically are using SQL. So they would be need they would need some kind of query performance and all that. So you have to think. And you should use, of course, in this case, the data warehouse you're you're setting up is gonna be based on ELT framework. So you must understand what is ELT, uh, extract load transform, com in comparison, for example, the usual one for um, data lakes and others, or data warehouses is usually the ETL, which is basically the exactly just the transform happens before load. Um, and that, so this is the one you are setting up is ELT with DBT. So unlike the uh, ETL, this one just basically helps, basically means that analytics engineers that are working the city uh, traffic department will be setting up scheduled transformations for different needs. Okay. And the data is this data. This is a novel data that was collected in Athens. So that's based on uh, 10 drones and that was pre-processed. So this is basically the, the kind of, you assume it is, you know, if you look at the data, it is basically, um, it will, it, it has for a number of use cases. So basically there are in this case, 10 locations, that means 10 drones, and then all of them reading at different dates. So, uh, and then as well as also different times in a day. Okay. So that basically is the kind of data that the city traffic department will be bringing every day, basically call it. And so your thing is that this is a sample data. So you can download it by selecting, for example, you know, either all drones, you know, you can select all drones and then a date, and then that you specify a time and then you agree, and then you'll basically be downloading it. Okay. And then the downloads are a CSV file and you, you have to understand the format of the CSV and, and all that. So, and this data that is collected, um, you know, and it's basically you are, you will be building a data warehouse to store some kind of this kind of data. And in particular, it's a trajectory, vehicle trajectory data. Okay. Um, and you can refer a number of some softwares that were built for visualization of this type of data, as well as, for example, in this, um, I think in, in, in one of them, I think it's, it's this one, you can also look at other type of data. So there are these four data, NUMA, uh, P NUMA is one that we gave you, but in, if you want to prepare for future cases, the HID and NGSIM are two types of data. They are recorded from camera on, uh, so not, not UAVs, but um, some, some kind of roadside cameras and they have different formats, but they are also similar trajectory data, CSV files. So you can download from there, from there, from this data as well, such that you can prepare, okay? And basically the expected output is basically um, setting up a fully working data warehouse that can be queryable. And you must know that the most important element at this point uh, in this project is to, to work as much possible to be really good at querying querying complex, you know, using complex SQL queries. And a number of companies really require that you are so fluent and you're basically by heart to know the, you know, kind of able to query. And we will play some also brain teasers on SQL uh, this week, but you, you, you have to focus. It's not about your Python code as much. So you, yes, you will set up in Python and bash, whatever to set up things. But remember, even in Airflow, if you can do it with query, with SQL, that's better, okay? And I think all the rest is that, and uh, instructions are as follows. You will set up a data warehouse using MySQL or uh, Postgres, an orchestration service that is Airflow, and then an LG tool you set up on DBT, and then a reporting environment, in this case, Redash, okay? Um, and you can, of course, integrate the Travis that I just showed you earlier, like this one that actually helps you actually visualize this kind of uh, trajectory data nicely. So you can set it up as well as a way of like, you know, consuming, that means editing this code to consume data instead of CSV to consume from uh, your data warehouse. 
So that would be really a good bonus for you to work on, especially if you are in the data uh, engineering street. Basically, the specifications are there. Um, and I think we will have, there is already uh, scheduled ones, but we will ask a few people to come and talk about some ELT versus ETL, analytics engineering with GPT, um, and data models for scalable data warehouses, data lakes versus data warehouses. Uh, in that tools and principles, in that one, we will have, we'll try to get some people to speak about Snowflake, Amazon Athena, and Glue, Databricks, Google BigQuery, and Amazon Redshift, okay? And the submissions are as usual. Okay, so that is the current week project. Questions, Biniam? Uh, will we be working on AWS this week or? Uh... No, in, on, your, on your own machine. Okay, so we'll be setting up the warehouse on our machine or? Yes. That means the MIT okay. Yeah. Thanks. And if people are struggling, we can spin up a few instances just so that many people can work on. But if you can set it up in your machine, that's better. Any question? And how do you feel about the project? You can also one or two. Is it clear? Is it intimidating, exciting? Okay. Great, number of people feel it's exciting. I mean, two people. Okay, so we will set up just for um, people who want to continue on Web3 and developing a number of improvements that they want to add or anything that they are able to do that. But you have to basically send um, or submit the kind of plan that you have for this week. You want to continue in the direction. So some to finish, some to expand, some to deploy, uh, anything in that in that element. Okay, I think we can stop there unless there are any questions. That doesn't. Hello. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so the problem description is okay, uh, but uh, I think uh, the tutorial numbers are uh, very limited uh, this week. Yeah. If it is possible to add uh, some uh, tutor uh, tutors on some areas, it is better. Yeah, we, we will set up some Please. tutorials okay. on, on these elements. Yeah, if you get uh, people to do so, it yeah. is important. Okay, thank you. And in terms of the expected output, I think it is that it's already in the submission. Uh, so, so you basically have to set up, you know, you, you have a data, you have to set up a script that basically takes that data and trans puts it into SQL, right? Creates tables. So the very first thing is that you must design you must understand what is, you know, what kind of data model you want to incorporate. So, you know, by a data warehouse, you basically need to put things into tables and organize them. So you have to design that schema. So the schema of the database is essential. Um, and then on top of that, also the ingestion. So basically from the CSVs, you are, trying, you are putting them, you are ingesting them. And depending on the data model and the kind of the complexity you want to add, that, that is, again, can be complex, can have, you know, a number of, so that's why a number of, I think you should be reading a minimum of that. I will add more, but this data warehouse um, is very important to read this part, just to understand what is, what is the difference between data warehouse and data lake, uh, because this is key, key components. There are, in the current modern way, there are two principles and philosophies. One is data warehouse model and the other one is data lake model. And both of them can provide data warehouses, can provide data lake. Data lakes can provide data warehouse, but the principles are very different. 
Um, so you have to, you know, the references. And then on top of that, ETL versus ELT is very important to understand as well, in a way that in ELT, especially you need, you're basically assuming that your database is highly performant. That means it's highly distributed. In that sense, it could be Snowflake, it can be any other Greenbloom, or um, I think there are a number of them that I will share as well, that, that are basically performance. Even Google Query, a big query, as well as Amazon Redshift, these are a number of kind of highly performant, unlike the usual, uh, the usual kind of MySQL and, and, and Postgres, these are just not distributed. There are now a number of distributed databases and they are highly performant. That means you can query, you know, you can basically do a lot more transformation once the data is loaded. And so that's what is called ELT. In ELT, you're basically extracting and putting the data and then you're loading it and then you apply some kind of SQL uh, based DBTs that one of them, a very main one, that you basically apply scheduled transformations for many, a number of other uh, end time consumers. So transformations happen at the end on an end basis and probably on a scheduled basis. While ETL assumes that the database is ready to be queried, right? It's basically that you have extracted it and then on that you have applied transformation and then you have loaded it by just loading these cases really that you are able to just query, consume it directly, let's say from front ends, whatever. While in LT, you're basically assuming there is some transformation that's on to, sitting on top of the database that that is then con, you know consumed later. So that's really a, a big uh, change between them. And then data models, you have to understand. So the design, loading data, and thinking about end, end users, in this case, analytics engineers to do DBT, to apply DBT, and data science machine learnings to actually be able to query data um, and as fast and assuming that the data will increase. So that means you have to estimate the amount of data flows per day, given, given that, you know, if you have 10 swarm of uh, UAVs, that the amount of data you'll get per day, you know, you can estimate it. And so you should be able to then think of like, what form of structure do you want, you know, and if all that kind of thinking. So the output is basically what we require ultimately is that you have a pipeline, basically a Git, that you have written everything to be able to launch a database or a distributed database that would be, in this case, we didn't ask a distributed database. We just asked because you're working on your laptop, it's just a MySQL or a Postgres. But in future, you can think of the schema should be thinking about that, or you should be understanding that. Next week will be that migration from here to a more distributed. So you have to know next week's project is also data engineering, and it's a migration of database and every other thing that you have built, including some queries, you have to migrate them easily. So you have to think about, imagine after a year, you wanna migrate everything that you have done. So that's the next week's project, just to give you a hint. So you basically need at the moment to set up that, to design, to design the schema, to put data and to be able to query it and learn as much as possible advanced SQL um, element, okay? Is that, does that make it clear? Uh, Brooke, Biniam. Okay, uh, do we set up uh... The database ourselves, or is it supposed to be set up uh, through you SQL up code? Thing. Ah, yeah, of course. You, I mean, you basically have to set it up. You have to create all the tables, whatever the databases, if, from script. Everything should be scripted because you are migrating it from your computer to another place. So as much as you are, yeah, you, you know, everything should be scripted. The reason why I'm saying that because next week you are migrating everything to another database. Yeah, the, uh, the reason why I ask this, will it be like uh, deployed? That means uh, the table created uh, through uh, the pipeline itself or uh, is it uh, the table set up first and then uh, the extraction, loading and uh, transformation uh, follow okay, later? I mean, even the beginning, the schema definition should be in, in .sql and you should be able to run that SQL if you have, if you use, let's say, Python, you could be running, you know, basically you should have create database. You could use, of course, um, uh, what is it called? Python um, 
some tools that I mean some packages uh, that that would able to create for you once you give the location basically the login details the configuration for the database it should be able to create the database itself populate it and all that right. thank you yeah and as well as also the other tools that is loading data and stuff and Meron it's true that is we will be migrating the database so assuming now you're not going to migrate anything manual but you must write another script to migrate your current scripts the ones that you you have written today or this week you will be migrating them next week into another database into a distributed database Ken. Mm, so whatever we are loading to the database is the data we have already transformed so it is the elt so basically you know it's again one consumer once one one of the consumers are basically getting just the raw data so you don't worry about the transformation at the moment you're basically setting transformations using uh, dbt so you load you you basically extract the data that basically means you read the csv whatever and you put them and you load them um, so you, you load them into the database and after that you set up dbt to basically make the transformation in this case the transformations will be con from the dbt will be consumed by a dashboard in this case redash right so as dear also ask is asking so the dashboard will be at the moment is really can show only just the amount of data that is saved the tables you know some kind of basic counts of data basic locations and all that just what you saw what is already in the database to be able to query but then you can also use that's what i'm saying you can also set up uh, a way of visualizing the kind of uh, some plots for example the number of cars that are at a given specific time um, and histograms so that those are the kind of dashboards so in redash you basically are writing query again that is basically translated into um, a dashboard or basically a plot. So does that make sense? Does that clarify both D and Ken? Ken? Okay. It's clear now. Great. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else? Any question? Yeah, go on, Jeremy. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you, yeah. Uh, I have a question about the uh, website project. Yeah. And the folder arrangement is a little uh, confusing to me. Uh, my folder structure basically consists of backend folder, which contains the smart contract, and uh, the, on, the, on the other side, the front uh, end folder, which contains both the web app and the mobile app folders. Uh, but I'm having uh, trouble reading uh, the smart contract JSON file. So do I need to make copy of the smart contract for, the, for each folder? Or do I have to init a Tefl or hard art to both the mobile app and the web app? Okay, so I'm probably not qualified to answer that, but anyone uh, like who wants to answer that was done that. Yeah, Enoch. Uh, this might not be perfect, but the way I was treating the smart contract was just as a specified key for both. So I had three folders: the mobile app, the smart contract, and the admin web app. And then once the smart contract, the smart contract has been like, properly implemented, I was going to copy it over to both folders. You can also have a bash script that you can simply run from that folder, which copies the, the smart contract JSON file into uh, both uh, both folders. Does that make sense? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after uh, done working with the smart contract, uh, and after compiling, I can copy the JSON file to both folders, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's how uh, I like how uh, taste the contract implementation, the, the the files that are going to be generated when you uh, deploy the contract, everything uh, related to the smart contract. I kept them in a single folder, and then once I did the deployment, uh, I just copied the JSON file into the client uh, folders, the mobile app and the web app. Okay, gotcha. Thanks. Right. And Nardos, so it, you can do both. It's whatever you think is worth spending your week. So you can, it's, if it's just only improving, you can as well. And, you know, you can be just like saying like, I want to improve it such that it is really deployed and tested. And I want even like real, real money to this paint one or something like that. Or you have you identify maybe extensions, completeness, tests, you know, security analysis, and all that that we require that you haven't done. You can basically list them as things that you want to add. Because these days, of course, it's not just only writing that uh, in in Web three job uh, openings. Most people are really looking for security analysis as well as tests, like completeness. So that is a big deal. If you haven't done that, that's that can take uh, itself um, a lot of time. So you can just say, I want to complete this and this, this. We just want to know that there is enough work that you have told and you wanted to tackle in that area. Does that make sense? Great. Okay. And in this case, um, maybe like you can just basically submit them what is the easiest way to submit is it would be good if it is in a form so Anastasia can we prepare a form or just to be able to receive some of this okay so it's either a good I think that the easiest is a form probably or I think that's, or maybe a submission, uh, just a simple submission in Google Class. That can be also easy. Okay, okay, I think. Uh... Yeah. And, and if nothing has been set up, you can basically email to Anastasia and, and me, that's, that should be also fine at the moment. Okay, Jeremy. Uh, for me, both my uh, Algorand project and uh, this project uh, miss improvement. So, uh, which one do I have to do for this week? I think you you can choose again. You know, you can focus if you want. You can focus on both, on or you can focus on one. I think depending on the amount of work, right? But that's the the point is that we want it to be like there are a number of things that are under. Like for job readiness in Web3, we needed, you know, you need to really understand tests um, and security analysis, and you should be able to talk about that. So imagine you're sitting with somebody, an interviewer, and I think the one thing they want to ask is that that your understanding of, of course, the how the, the three things integrate, you know, the the backend, the smart contracts, the web, you know, the Web2 Web3 elements. Um, so these ones conceptually you will understand you basically most people have understood but then they will basically ask specific questions about like okay what about you know you know how do you identify security have you looked at other people's security analysis you know stuff like that and you know what is the test what how do you test in in a web3 a contract and and those elements to be able to answer them you basically need to work on them all right so you and then uh, as well as also, I think the people that probably, yeah, if you haven't paid attention, you must pay attention about the kind of the expenses. Can you improve? Can you save it? You know, how can you save some things in a storage? How can you delete, you know, all that elements? Um, um, 
I think it's it's basically you can you can assume that in the next week you will basically migrate someone's spot. Um, and I think that would be, I think it's true. We haven't thought about it, but also next week, it's basically people can work on, on a web three as well, if they are interested uh, in that, especially if they are specializing in that area. So I think you can be working to migrating other people's work, or you can be, we'll, we'll think about other projects to do in the web three. And I think there are a number of things that, um, we should be for Web3 preparation. We had only two, so we must work probably a bit more. That's why we are allowing, I think machine learning and data engineering is good, sufficient type of projects and diversity, but the Web3, we need to kind of spend a little bit more time. But again, also, even in this week and next week, one thing you have to know is that there will be a number of ad hoc challenges that I would give, um, basically just some kind of a skill analysis like time limited. So you have one day, you have to submit kind of uh, thing. And that's, that's going to be a little bit informal this week and next week. And the, the whole point is that a lot of the, the job openings and interviews, their first thing, they would send you some kind of job, uh, basically, um, some challenge, as well as also they would ask you to go and have a test in, 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 in some code tests. Uh, sites. So we are preparing. It's a, a bit ad hoc. And and in that way, we will try to prepare also for next week, probably um, a challenge on Web3. Um, if this one, if that is, I think I haven't thought about it, but thanks for raising. Okay. Good. Anything else? Yeah, Anastasia. Okay, so for the, if you're choosing another project, uh, I've already talked to Abdullahi, it will be a submission, classroom submission link, and uh, due, due to, to 8 p.m. UTC. Yes. <laughs> Great, awesome. Thanks, guys. And as I said, the next two weeks, think of it as more of you're now graduated and you are in the interview sessions, but to perfecting things and dealing with your both elements of skill and soft skills. So it is, you have to, I think the one thing, if you take anything from today, if whatever little things you have, do, you have done, you have to own it. And you have to talk about it in, in a very positive way. And you must always just tell the story from like five things that you have really achieved and you know you have to basically sell that and probably one thing that of course you haven't you wanted but you haven't achieved that you will improve again not in a in a negative way but in a in an improvement needs improvement way so those two i would say take it take notice as well as also of course instructions in conversations in any talk that you are in you must you must be able to pay attention to what the employer is saying, especially limitations or guidance or you know, guides that they give you. Four minutes, 50 seconds, tell me about that, specifically that, until like those elements, those instructions are important because you don't know whether they mean that the employer is going to be very interested about them or very keen to evaluate you based on that or just simply saying it. And so the best is to keep, to, to take notice. Okay, with that, let's close. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, bye.